Hello everyone, it's Masood. Welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be USMLE Step 2 CK High Yield Facts Part 4. Remember, this is randomized rapid fire high yield facts that are relevant for both USMLE Step 2 CK as well as Comlex Level 2 CE. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the other videos. Be sure to subscribe to receive all the latest videos in this playlist as well as all of my other content. And let's just jump right into it. Blank resolves 85% of cases of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, this BPPV, the vertigo that causes severe dizziness. The Epley maneuver resolves about 85% of these cases. Really useful tool for these patients that have severe dizziness and have this positional vertigo. Dendritic ulcers are characteristic of blank. They're going to be characteristic of herpes simplex keratitis. These dendritic ulcers are seen on a fluorescein stain. Here's going to be your visual stimulus. You can see one of these dendritic kind of appearing ulcers on a fluorescein stain of the eye here. And if you see this, that is a sign of herpes simplex keratitis. High yield fact as well as a high yield picture right here. What is the most common location of an ectopic pregnancy? Ectopic pregnancies, as you may recall, can occur in a variety of areas in the female GU system as well as other places in the body. Pretty scary. But the most common location is in the fallopian tubes. This is about 95% of cases. These ectopic pregnancies, they can also be cervical, ovarian, even abdominal. But the most common location is in the fallopian tubes. What is the most common cause of vaginal discharge in pediatric patients? Well, this is actually going to be foreign objects. Remember, you know, kids, they're very curious. They like to shove things in places that they probably shouldn't. Uh, so the most common cause of vaginal discharge in pediatric patients is usually due to a foreign object. It's the same thing in children that have purulent nasal discharge. One of the first things that you want to make sure that you're ruling out is a foreign object because that could be the cause of all of their problems. When does non-bilious emesis due to pyloric stenosis typically occur? This is high yield because we want to know when various diseases present in the newborn, at what time, at how long in their life. And non-bilious emesis due to pyloric stenosis typically occurs at about three to six weeks of age. Some resources say as early as two weeks, as late as eight weeks, and Technically, it can occur anytime from birth to up to six months, so it can be a little bit tricky, but really the main time frame when we worry about pyloric stenosis is about three to six weeks of age, so be sure that you know that. Bromocryptine can be used as treatment for blank. You may remember this from my step one videos from step one studying. Bromocryptine can be used to treat neuroleptic malignant syndrome. And if you recall, the other medication that we can use for this NMS is going to be dantrolene. So bromocryptine and dantrolene can both be used as a treatment for neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Moving on now, what is the treatment for blastomycosis? This is another one of those kind of obscure, rare diseases. We studied it for step one. It kind of comes back around for step two. The treatment for blastomycosis is typically going to be itraconazole, and it's usually going to be oral itraconazole by mouth. Some patients with more severe infections, they may be admitted and they might receive other medications like amphotericin B, uh, but typically the treatment for blastomycosis is going to be oral itraconazole. When should amniocentesis be completed to evaluate for fetal genetic abnormalities? This is typically going to occur at about 15 to 20 weeks gestation to evaluate for some of these fetal abnormalities. All right, now, what is the most common cause of bloody discharge from the breast in middle-aged women? Remember, this is going to be an abnormal thing. Middle-aged women, bloody discharge, this is very concerning. The most common cause of bloody discharge from the breast in middle-aged women is going to be an intraductal papilloma. This is a papillary tumor that typically affects a single lactiferous or milk-producing gland. So if you have a middle-aged woman, 40s, 50s, around that time, and they have this bloody discharge from the breast, the most common cause is going to be this intraductal papilloma. And now to go along with that, what is the treatment for an introductal papilloma? And it's typically going to be excision, right? It's just affecting a single duct, a single gland. So excision of that area is going to be curative for that introductal papilloma. Getting back to kids now, at what age should infants return to their birth weight? Typically by about 14 days. Remember some newborns, some neonates, it is normal for them to lose about 5 to 10% of their birth weight over the first few days. Some parents, especially new parents, might get scared by that, but that is normal. But usually at around the 14 days, the two-week point, we should see them return to that birth weight. Next question, what is the moral reflex? Children, of course, during their developmental stages, they develop a lot of different reflexes. The moral reflex is going to be this arm extension and abduction, so movement away from their body 
followed by flexion and adduction towards their body. This is something that's involuntary. It's a primitive reflex. You can see this in children, the Moro reflex. What psychiatric disorder can propranolol be used for? Propranolol is a really interesting medication. It has many different uses, but in terms of psych, propranolol is useful for performance-only social anxiety disorder. This is a medication that can be taken right before an anxiety-inducing event like public speaking or something like that. Some patients may have as-needed propranolol for these performance-related social anxiety disorders. Moving on now, what is the best initial treatment for primary hypersomnia? Guys, remember, I keep saying it in every single video, you really want to make sure that you're reading the questions very carefully for Step 2 CK and for Complex Level 2. It's asking for the best initial treatment. There's a few words in there, the best treatment, but also the initial treatment. So you don't want to get tripped up by that. The best initial treatment for primary hypersomnia is going to be CNS stimulants, right? So this primary hypersomnia, this is excessive daytime sleepiness or nighttime sleepiness. So how are we going to counteract that sleepiness? We're going to use CNS stimulants, something like amphetamines that are safe to use uh, that will treat this condition. What is the treatment for a copper ingestion? This is going to be penicillamine. This is one of those chelating agents that can be used to sequester heavy metals. Copper ingestions, toxic ingestion, not a very commonly seen thing, but of course a lot of these obscure random things are highly testable on these exams. So just know treatment for a copper ingestion is going to be chelation with penicillamine. And another kind of obscure ingestion, what is the treatment for a lead ingestion? This is also going to be penicillamine. There are certainly other medications that can be used. There are other chelating agents out there. The one that I want you to know is going to be penicillamine, useful for both copper and lead ingestions. What medication is known to cause priapism as an adverse effect? You probably remember this from, from step one. It's going to be trazodone, aka trazabone. Uh, just remember that for step two as well. Trazodone can have priapism as an adverse effect. All right, going to throw in a true or false question here. True or false opioid withdrawal can result in seizures. This one is really important to know for the boards, also really important to know for real life. This is false. Opioid withdrawal does not result in seizures, okay? Opioid withdrawal, it can be a scary thing. Patients can have severe symptoms, but it is not life-threatening, and it does not cause seizures. The reason this is important clinically is if you have a patient that comes in with seizure activity and you're concerned for some type of withdrawal, just based on that, you can probably rule out opioids as being the cause. Some toxins that can cause seizures when there's withdrawal include alcohol, barbiturates, benzodiazepines, those can all cause seizures when withdrawal occurs. Opioids is not on that list, so be sure that you know that. What is the best initial treatment for bipolar disorder? Again, reading the question, best initial treatment. This is going to be lithium. You know, this is a little bit of a controversial medication. It has a very narrow therapeutic window, so unfortunately easy for patients to get toxicity as well as, you know, subclinical dosing, uh, but it is still first line. Some of the other medications that are kind of out there now are medications like aripiprazole, lamotrigine, carbamazepine, but technically the best initial treatment for bipolar disorder, still lithium. What is the most common pathogen causing meningitis in teens? Hopefully you guys all know this one. This is going to be Neisseria meningitis, right? Teens, especially, you know, the military barracks and the college dorms, that kind of thing, close quarters. The most common pathogen causing meningitis is Neisseria meningitis. For a Adults, remember, it's streptococcus pneumoniae, so it is different based on the age, so be sure that you know that. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Click here on the left to watch Step 2 CK High Yield Facts Part 3, and click here on the right to go all the way back and start with Part 1. Thank you again for watching. Be sure to subscribe to receive all of my videos, and I'll catch you in the next one.